Okay, and welcome to General Chemistry, section 1.5 of the Open Stacks book. Today we're going to be talking about uh, measurement, uncertainty, accuracy, and precision. Um, what we just got finished talking about was, was uh, measurements, talking about uh, them having three pieces, right? You've got the actual, the, the magnitude, the number that is associated with it, but then that number has to represent something, and so that represents a unit, right? But what else do we have? Well, within that number, as it, as it is a measurement, as we're using something to measure the natural world that is around us, right, we're going to have some level of uncertainty. And so what we're talking about today delves a little bit more into that uncertainty and um, in comparing our measured values to that which is expected or that which is known, right? So let's begin. Come on. Ha! Look at that. Oh. There we go. Not ever sure whether to let it keep trying or. Okay, so. What we're talking about here, like I said, measurement, uncertainty, accuracy, and precision. We're, we're starting off. This is a nice little concept to have. We're talking about the integers. Counting is precise. I know that I have one pencil. I have three ink pens. There is no uncertainty within this, right? There are exactly three ink pens here. I am certain of that. There are exactly three markers here. Right? I have Three pieces of paper. Well, uh, yeah, see that 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 right there. That is not an entire sheet of paper, right? So if I were to compare it to a whole sheet of paper, how could I do that? Well, I can't just like measure it. It's got a bunch of weird angles. So one way I could do it is perhaps see what the mass of the paper is, but then this paper has been written on, so that'll add the mass, that'll be a little bit different from this paper that has no ink on it, so we get a clean piece of paper, but who's to say that those pieces of paper are exactly the same, or perhaps it's a little bit more, it's a little bit heavier in one region, or the, 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 you know, there was some uncertainty, and when the blade came down and cut through the paper, that a little bit of paper got, or, a little bit of paper got onto one side and, and less on the prior sheet, right? Or it could be such that, well, it is such that uh, any scale that we would use to measure the mass of one sheet of paper and the mass of this partial sheet of paper is not going to have an infinite number of decimal places. There's going to be some uncertainty there, right? But I say I have two sheets of paper, and that is true. Now, if I just want to say that this is a piece of paper, that's right, right? I have three pieces of paper. I mean, it doesn't say anything about the size. I have four pieces of paper now, right? So, when we go to count, those are exact numbers. They are precise. There is no um, uncertainty inherent within it. There are also relationships that are precise. One foot is 12 inches. Right? Those are two ways of saying the same thing. Right? One inch is 2.54 centimeters. Two ways of saying the same thing. Right? And so these are equivalencies and they are precise. That relationship is precise. And we will be using these relationships to be able to convert from inches into centimeters or from centimeters into inches. Right? But these relationships are also exact. Right? There is no uncertainty. They are definitions. However, as we saw, when making a measurement, there's going to be some sort of, un there is going to be some uncertainty, as we saw with the, the paper there, right? There's some uncertainty in the scale that doesn't have an infinite number of decimal places. A little bit more of a visual example. We've got a we've got water in a graduated cylinder. Now in one of your labs you'll be asked to uh, make readings, and, and the readings we have to make at this curved surface 
We talked about that a little bit on one of the videos. This curved surface is known as a meniscus, and we take the reading at the bottom of the meniscus. Okay, the graduated cylinder is calibrated as such that wherever the bottom of the meniscus lies, that's the volume that we're supposed to, that the, that the cylinder contains. Now, this does not lie, this meniscus here, it does not lie precisely on one of these, on one of these lines, right? On one of these measured out lines. It is somewhere in between. So what do we have to do? Are we certain of the value or not? There is some uncertainty there, and we have to estimate, right? We have to, we are limited by the measuring device. Even if it was on the line, we are still limited, right? Because the line takes up some space. We wouldn't know if it's on the top of the line or the bottom of the line or somewhere in the middle of the line. There is some inherent uncertainty in making the measurement. So, what we can say though is we see 15, well that's 20, so each of these ticks is going to be 1. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We know that we have more than 21 milliliters. This line would be 22. We know that we have less than 22 milliliters. And so we have to estimate somewhere in between here. Now, I look at this and I say, well, that's 21.5. All right, well, just a second. Bring my glasses up a little bit. Ah, no, I think it's 21.6. Take that back, it's 21.4. Right, yeah. Right? You may look at it and see something a little bit different than somebody else, right? Because we're estimating here. It may, well, so over here, that this one, where they've got these lines and everything, I don't know if it's an exact zoom in of this picture, but over here, it looks to me like it's 21.6. It looks a little, maybe 21.7. A perception may change or may be different from one person to the next. Therefore, it is uncertain. Now, well, why, well, let's just draw some more lines, right? I can just get my ink pen out here. And just, I'm not going to do that because they would get mad at me for drawing on the board. And the, but, but not on the screen, right? But no, I can, I can make more lines. I can break it up. I can say, okay, well, let's break it up into ten more pieces. Okay, well, that may curve may fall on one of those ten pieces, but the line has some amount of, of space that it takes up, so was it the top of the bottom and the middle of the lines? Or is it between two of the lines that I've just pretended to draw? Right? Well, can't we just continue to break it up? One, so I'm just going to cut this into halves. Okay, I'll cut that into half. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it into halves again. Well, that's a bad half. Just bear with it, right? And cut it into halves again. I'll cut those into halves. If I keep going with this, I would have to have a finer and finer tipped marker, right? And all of these lines would just slowly come together into a continuum, right? Unless there's, because there's either some amount of space between them or there is no space between them and therefore they are all one. Right? And we, have, we would have then lost their distinguishing, the ability to distinguish between this part and this part because all of the lines are connected. There is no space in between. Right? But if there is space in between, then it's uncertain as to where we are. Okay. So, we have to estimate, and within that estimation lies the uncertainty that we were introduced to in section 1.4. And this is the way it is with all of our measurements of the world that surround us. We have to set some unit, but um, that, that when we actually go to make a measurement, the measurement is going to be, um, is, is, it's constrained 
it, it's constrained by our measuring devices. It's constrained by our perception. It doesn't go out to an infinite number of decimal places, right? Every measurement has some uncertainty, which depends on the device used and the user's ability. 